Hi everyone, so I'm going to make a start on some of the walkways and some of these black areas around these um, filler caps. So I've spent some time just making sure that they're all level and just guesstimate the size of the black squares. There's three on this side, three on that side and there's one on the um, landing gear door. So I've made a little uh, cover so I can spray it individually and move it along like that trying to avoid that dreaded overspray. So I've demasked. Now I could be more efficient and mask these areas here, plus the um, anti-glare and done it all in one swoop. But I'm just gonna take it easy and just do one bit at a time and not get ahead of myself. So I need to do the anti-glare, need to do these vents. And then the hardest bit, the walkways, because they've got a thin yellow line all the way around them. So I've masked off the uh, anti-glare area. And one thing I, I tend to use with the odd shapes like these is I'll use a mirror. And what I'm doing, I'm looking at the reflection. It's almost like a second opinion. And you'd be surprised what will stand out that you won't see normally by looking at it directly. So I'm happy with the reflection. Uh, let's apply the paint. Now to get on with those walkways. So that's the walkways masked. I should use kitchen paper just to mask off the rest of the areas. And then I can start to apply the first uh, colour. So the first cut's gonna be white. And that will help the uh, yellow go on a bit more easier. I won't need as many coats. I've got the back walkways to add, but I'll do them later. Get these ones out of the way with first. So I've masked off the yellow. That's a sort of a width of the yellow stripe. Now I'll apply the black. So with the black added, I left it a few hours before I uh, peeled all that masking off. And sometimes, like a kid opening Christmas present on Christmas Day, uh, I get a bit keen sometimes and try and be patient, but I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to rip it off to see what it looks like. I broke one of the U brackets around here. I did catch the part and in an attempt to glue it back on, it just fell somewhere I can't find it. If I find it again, I will attempt to glue it again, but thankfully it's around an area that won't be seen too much that's not visible. Now that yellow cheat line, well, let's call it that, I think it's a tad too wide. 
So it's a bit in your face at the moment. So I'm hoping that the weathering will knock it down a bit. On some uh, pictures I've seen, mainly um, other modelers' Chinooks, there's a, a red diagonal line that runs all along here. A bit of effort, I perhaps could have done that, but uh, no, no thanks. Also, any slight discrepancy, it will stand out a mile. So if you're going to put all that effort to do that, you need to make sure it's bang on. And I just wasn't in the mood to do that. The rear um, walkways here either side, I'm going to leave that yellow line off because I think we've got enough going on here. I've got enough issues to try and sort that out without dealing more around here, the rear walkways. Uh, what else? There's, um, there's a black area here to paint on top here. The vent holes around here, I'll leave them off till I've weathered everything. And once it's all been weathered, decaled up, then I shall add those last. So I'll go with some more, more masking. Lucky me. So the rear walkway. Um, I cut up the Trumpeter Kits decal sheet. The rear walkway for the version they got was a bit more extensive. So I've cut out the strip, placed it over the top of some Tamiya tape, cut it out and then I've been messing around trying to put it in the right position. Uh, we've got this scoop here which looks odd to me but it looks okay around here. I've got it near enough as the photographs uh, have it. So I'll use this as a template now and then I can mask around this knowing that whatever I spray is going to look like that. I'm glad I'm not doing the yellow line that would really be complicated around there. Right, uh, this is supposed to be fun. This is a hobby, a fun hobby I do in my spare time. So now I've got the majority of it masked off. I should use kitchen paper to mask off the rest of the area. But before I do that, I've got to do the other side. So I'm going to need my template. Just make sure I retrieve it intact. So that's the majority of the paintwork done now. I'll let that dry for a few days. And I usually wet sand the surface, but because of all the lumps and bumps, uh, that's just a no-no. I'm just gonna end up burning through some of the corners by doing that. So I've just used an old T-shirt with a bit of water and just polished the surface. So the next thing is to see what I've got to hand decal-wise. Now I know I haven't got much and I'm gonna have to create a lot of the decals on the computer. They're never quite as durable as uh, manufactured decals. So I'm not going to go overboard with the decals, even, even though with a kit this size you could perhaps add quite a lot more. But I'm trying to keep the homemade decals to a minimum because the majority of them are going to be homemade decals. Uh, there's a few of these uh, yellow crop marks, things like this here, another little bits here that I can use from the actual trumpeter's uh, decal sheet, which is nice. But you can see here, these I've had to make. So I print them out on a bit of paper first, once I've uh, created the artwork. I've taken some measurements looking at photographs, just looking at the spatial awareness of certain things. Cut the paper artwork out and then place it on the actual uh, shin up just to see whether it's roughly right. So these then are printed out on a clear decal sheet. I leave them to dry under cover so we don't get any dust settling on the ink. Leave them to dry for a couple of hours and then give them several light coats of uh, clear varnish just to seal that ink in. So I shall start uh, adding these decals to the uh, shin up. Now one thing I've got to do uh, well, I didn't forget, I knew how to do them, but I forgot I should have done before I added the decals, and that was the seals around the windows. So 
So I've just painfully, last couple of hours, been masking seals off and then I just place that over the top like that and then gone through them all. So I'm going to uh, just let them dry properly, peel them off gently. I've still got decals on there that I haven't sealed down. So you can see where I've got bits of tissue just covering the decals. So gingerly take all that off and give it a clean with some compressed air and then give it a final coat of satin varnish to seal everything in. And then hopefully I can get on with this weathering. So after a few days of letting the satin varnish um, dry off, cure, whatever you want to call it, I've applied uh, static fine oils. Get some light on this thing. So I've just been using um, Tamiya tape, selecting a few panels, and just adding. Gotta be careful, I don't get oil on my fingers here. Uh, you can see I've got quite a bit of oil here, and for the amount I've used, it's way overboard. You can see um, the bluey greys, dark greys, and the um, greens here that I used. Uh, this is the brush I applied. Just a few light blobs of oil paint because it will go a long way and then blended it in with this. So I've just tried to break up a few areas. So I'm gonna leave those also dry for a few days and then I'll come in with um, probably a, a water-based wash rather than uh, any enamel one and we'll see how that goes. And then once that's done, I can start adding some exhaust stains at the back here and a few other bits of uh, grimy marks. So I've added a black wash. I used um, Flory's Black. So what I do is I start off um, by watering this down and then just do a, a light wash and just see what it looks like. See that so gives you a rough idea. Now I will add bits later on, but I won't need to put this to one side now because I've got I've got to start those rotor blades and there's quite a bit of work there to do. So I'm just gonna put this to one side now and jump in and try and uh, crack on with those uh, rotor blades. So I'm going to release these parts here, about there. So I'm just going to cut these off at this joint here. One. Two. Three. So I'll clean those up and have another look at them in a minute. So that's the parts cleaned up now. And the intention is to either add um, some aluminium or brass rod, uh, cut to length, and then I can adjust it as I see fit to this part here for all three of those parts. But the blade will be attached to this before I do that. Uh, the blade will help me visually see whether I've got the angles and dangles right. Talking of blades, being cannibalized, I've um, taken that kink out. We don't want that. I've taken about a mil, 1.5 mil off the edge there. So I need thinning down considerably. Added two bits of two mil plastic card just to boost up this angle here. As I said, it's just a personal opinion this. So I'm happy with it, doesn't mean it's right. That's my caveat. So I've let them dry and then uh, some I did earlier and then sand them. You see where there's quite a few sink marks. 
So those have been sanded, cleaned. I've no doubt there'll be a bit more work once I've added a bit of paint to this. And once I'm happy with all that, I'll add it to this pitch arm or pitch housing. Uh, I think there's a couple of bits of wire to add to it, just a bit, bit more detail. And then as I said, with that as an assembly or built up, I, I'll get a good idea of the angles and dangles to uh, attach this to this part here. And then that part will be attached to the uh, rotor housing. All this detail, it's right position, all this detail below this, um, I think it's a weather protective cover. You won't see all this bit, just all disappear. So on the blades, it was a Kevlar ribbon. Now the kit really exaggerated this. It was quite uh, prominent. And not only that, uh, rather than sand round it, it's easy just to sand it all off. Now I've used strips of Tamiya tape just to try and recreate it on all six blades. So Tamiya tape cut into strips and then just wrap round. And then once I was happy with the where it was wrapped, I just added a bit of um, Tamiya clear just to seal it. And after a few coats of paint, it should uh, blend in a bit nicely, but still prominent enough to show that there's something there. I've still got the tabs to add. Once I find out whereabouts they go along the blade, position wise. Now the blades have been uh, cleaned up and I'm happy with them. I'm ready to assemble these parts to the blade. I also took out, while I was at it, these recesses, some recess panel lines. There's one, two, three, four. I didn't think they looked right on a composite blade, so removed them, got rid of them. The other thing I've done is I've trimmed down the lugs on this bracket here. So that's an after and that's a before. So you can see how meaty they were. And there's no way because of the way I've gone about tackling the blades that I'm gonna fit that in there. Not without something giving way. Because of that shock absorber, that tells me that all this should be fine. So I'll get on with the other five blades. So that's all the work on the blades done, I hope, unless I've uh, missed something. I've just been adding um, this lightning protection wire that goes on all the blades. It's about the only wiring I can see. Nothing else that uh, seems visible. That's just a bit of blue wire from a dead motor. The next thing to do now is to paint all these up. But I'm going to end the video here now. And I do hope to see you for the uh, final part, part 11. And uh, thank you for watching.